This video is part of Consumer Theory. In it, I will show you how to graph an indifference curve for a given utility function. In it, I will discuss how to graph an indifference curve for any given utility function. An indifference curve is a graphical representation of the utility function. Remember that for an indifference curve, all the bundles give the consumer the same level of satisfaction. Thus, along an indifference curve, utility is held constant. An indifference curve thus represents a level curve of utility or the graph of utility when utility is held constant at some value. When utility is a function of two goods, we could graph utility functions in a three-dimensional space. On one axis, we would have utils. On a second axis, one good. And on the third axis, the second good. An indifference curve is going to take a slice of this utility function where the slice is at some specific value of utility. Again, an indifference curve is a utility function graphed for one specific value of utility. I will show you how to graph an indifference curve from a utility function in two different ways. Here's the first way. Because an indifference curve shows all the combinations of goods that give the same level of utility, one approach is to take any utility function, fix u at some value, now you can actually plug in a value, any number would do, some constant k, or you can just leave it as u bar. The important thing is you're recognizing along an indifference curve u is constant, and then solving that equation for the good on the y-axis. Now we have the utility function written where y is the variable on the left and x the variable on the right. To determine the slope or direction of this curve, we take the first derivative and evaluate its sign. Here, the first derivative of y with respect to x gives us a minus u squared over x squared. The fact that this is negative tells me that the indifference curve is downward sloping. As x gets bigger, y must get smaller. And again, that's because there has to be a trade-off when the goods are good goods. More of one has to come with less of another when holding utility constant. To determine the curvature of the indifference curve, now we evaluate the sign of the second derivative. Here, the second derivative of y with respect to x is a positive u bar squared times 2 over x cubed. What's important is that this is a positive. To evaluate the sign of the second derivative, you also have to consider the sign of the first. In this instance, because the first derivative is negative, and the second derivative is positive, or because the signs don't match, the rate at which the curve slopes down is decreasing. To summarize, we know from the negative sign of the first derivative that the indifference curve is downward sloping, and we know that because the first derivative is negative and the second is positive, the indifference curve is downward sloping at a decreasing rate. The second way I want you to know how to graph an indifference curve is by using both the marginal rate of substitution and the marginal utilities of goods X and Y. Before I explain this method, let me define the marginal rate of substitution, or the MRS for short. The MRS is the absolute value of the slope of an indifference curve. The MRS of X for Y measures the amount of Y a consumer's willing to trade for one more x to remain as well off. In that way, the MRS tells us the change in y needed when there's some change in x. Again, the MRS is a slope, so notice that what we have here is exactly rise over run. You're going to have to interpret an MRS, and so let me give you an example. Let's say that you know at this bundle here that the MRS is a 3, or that the slope of the curve at this point is a minus 3, giving us an MRS of 3 
or 3 over 1. What this number means is that if you give this consumer one more x, you need to take away three y's to keep him as well off. Or if you take one x away from this consumer, you need to give him three y's in order to keep him as well off. Again, the MRS reflects how much of one good the consumer's willing to trade for another unit of the other good in order to remain as well off. As I previously stated, usually we draw in difference curves as downward sloping and convex to the origin. Convex and difference curves display a diminishing or decreasing marginal rate of substitution. In other words, the MRS gets smaller and smaller as we move down along the indifference curve from left to right. The fact that the MRS is getting smaller means the curve is flattening out and means for every additional unit of the good on the x-axis, the consumer is willing to give up smaller and smaller amounts of the good on the y-axis. We can see that here because as the consumer consumes the second pizza, she's willing to trade more burritos, then she's willing to trade for the tenth pizza. Again, as we move down along a convex indifference curve, an individual's willing to trade decreasing amounts of good Y for each additional unit of good X. I will now show you how and why the MRS is the absolute value of the ratio of MUX to MUY. First, recall that marginal utility is the additional or extra utility that a consumer gets from consuming another unit of a good, holding consumption of the other goods constant. MUX, for example, tells us how utility will change when the consumer consumes an additional unit of good X, holding good Y constant, and MUY is the additional utility a consumer gets from consuming an additional unit of good Y, holding X constant. Each marginal utility is a partial derivative of the utility function with respect to some good. By taking the total differential of the utility function and then algebraically solving for dy divided by dx, we get that the slope of the indifference curve in absolute value equals the ratio of mux to muy. To understand this more intuitively, Consider moving a consumer along an indifference curve from bundle A to bundle B. In moving from A to B, the consumer gains some X but loses some Y. The additional utility gained from consuming more X must be exactly offset by the additional utility lost from losing this much Y. That's because along an indifference curve, utility does not change. We can write that as follows. From A to B, the change in utility is zero and equal to the overall impact on utility of the change in X plus the overall impact on utility of the change in Y. This right here is the overall impact on utility of the change in X because MUX tells us how utility will change for each additional change in X and delta x is how much x changes. So when we multiply the impact on utility of each additional unit of x times how many units x changes by, we get the overall impact on utility of the change in x. For a similar reason, this is the overall impact on utility of the change in y. Along an indifference curve, utility doesn't change, so the impact of the change in x on utility is exactly offset by the impact of the change in y on utility. Taking this new equation, now we can algebraically solve for delta y over delta x. For example, mux times delta x equals the negative of muy times delta y. Therefore, minus delta y over delta x equals mux over muy. 
the negative of the slope, rise over run, of an indifference curve equals the ratio of marginal utilities. Now, that can get confusing, so for simplicity, I define the MRS as the absolute value of the slope. Notice how the MRS is both the change in y divided by the change in x, as well as the ratio of mux to muy. This can get confusing, so maybe this example will help. Suppose on a bundle like A that mux is 24 and muy is 8. The MRS is therefore 24 divided by 8, or 3 over 1. What this 3 over 1 means is if this consumer consumes one more x, she needs to give up three additional y's. That's because consuming one more x will increase her utility by 24 utils. Along an indifference curve, utility is constant. So when she adds an x and utility gets bumped up by 24, she needs to take away enough y for utility to come down by 24. Here, each additional unit of y changes utility by 8. So to get utility to come down by 24, we need to take away 3 y's. Now that you have the MRS in your toolbox of tools to use to analyze utility, let's explore the second way of graphing an indifference curve. This way uses the signs of MUX and MUY to determine the direction of an indifference curve, that is, whether it slopes up, down, or is horizontal or vertical, and the signs of DMRSDX and DMRSDY to determine the curvature. Let's consider the following example. Let's say you know that MUX and MUY are both positive. That means that consuming an additional unit of each good will increase total utility. Both goods are good goods, or preferences are monotonic in both goods. For that reason, indifference curves slope down. If you give the consumer more of good X, in order to keep her as well off, you have to take away some Y. The second step is, given the direction, evaluate the signs of DMRSDX and DMRSDY to determine the curvature. Again, consider the example. Let's say we know DMRSDX is negative and DMRSDY is positive. This means an indifference curve is convex. To understand that, remember that the indifference curve slopes down. So if we read it from left to right, X goes up while Y goes down. So think about what happens to the MRS as X goes up. Because DMRS DX is negative, X and the MRS move in opposite directions. So as X gets bigger, the MRS gets smaller. At the same time that X gets bigger, Y gets smaller. DMRS DY being positive means that Y and the MRS move in the same direction. So, as y gets smaller, the MRS gets smaller. Add these two together, and as x gets bigger and y gets smaller, the MRS falls, which means the indifference curve gets flatter, which means it's convex to the origin. Now, this is just one example. We'll look at more examples in class. For now, check out my help sheet called Graphing Indifference Curves.